Okay, well, we are now up to our final speaker of the night. Um, he is a bona fide zoologist and science communicator with a PhD in behavioural ecology. Despite his credentials, a penchant for career sabotage compels him to spruik nonsense at public events, uh, otherwise known as my career. Uh, additional <laughs> skills include cartwheels, homeostasis, and resting bitch face. So please give him your resting listening face. It's Dr. James O'Hanlon. <laughs> <coughs> Nipples. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask about 50% of the people in this room can sleep well at night in the sound knowledge that they have nipples for very useful, evolutionarily sound reasons. But if you're like me and you're in the other half of the population, you may find yourself looking down every now and again and just thinking, what's the point? <laughs> you know, Generally speaking, over evolutionary timescales, things that don't serve a function tend to disappear. You know, the wings of flightless birds have all but disappeared. Our very own coccyx, which was once a long prehensile tail and our primate ancestors, has been reduced to, to near nothingness. And this has left biologists really confused as to why, not just in humans, but across a lot of mammals, we have nipples being maintained in juveniles and males that don't use them for lactation. Now, there are a couple of say, unsatisfactory hypotheses out there about gene expression and embryonic development and whatnot, but I have an alternative hypothesis. <laughs> they help us balance. So, <laughs> in short, nipples are external sensory organs that are sensitive to things like gravity. Because of this, they can get very detailed information about the body's relative position in space, <laughs> allowing us to, to compensate for shifts in balance and stay upright. And they work essentially like gyroscopes. Now, on the right here is a little diagram of the kind of miniature di uh, gyroscopes we have in devices like our smartphones and, and tablets that allow us to use motion controls. And gyroscopes are very simple. Uh, they work by having a dense central mass. And forces can act upon this dense central mass, forces like gravity, uh, velocity, angular momentum. Surrounding this dense central mass are uh, sensors that detect these forces and then send that information off to a CPU for processing. <laughs> Let's contrast and compare. We have on our uh, gyroscopic stabilizing organs a dense central mass. This dense central mass is surrounded uh, by tight clusters of nerve cells. And by having a pair of these sensory organs, we can then detect forces acting upon our bodies like gravity, <laughs> like velocity. That information is then transferred via nerve impulses up to our brain and processed. Now, this idea is not as ridiculous as it sounds. <laughs> it has precedent in insects. Now, insects usually have four wings, a pair of four wings and a pair of hind wings. But in guys like this crane fly here, the hind wings have been modified into forming these structures called haltiers. And these are gyroscopic stabilizing organs that help them uh, orientate themselves during flight. And we have an amazing case of essentially convergent evolution here, where <laughs> flies have uh, modified their wings to so function as gyroscopic stabilizing organs, we have done the same with our, our nipples. <laughs> what this means is that mammals are capable of extreme uh, feats of balance, of acrobat acrobatics, of agility, despite our large size. <laughs> now, even just something like this giraffe here, I mean, he stands, what, 10 meters high, perched on these tiny little legs. Despite the immense gravitational forces acting on it, it can stay upright, it can run around, it can walk, and it manages to do so because of the large amounts of data that are being fed to it through its nipples. <laughs> but what about those mammals that don't have nipples? How good are they at staying upright despite gravity? <laughs> Not good is the short answer. They're, they're just useless. They could not get up and walk to save their lives. <laughs>
Now this is interesting. If we look across the, the family tree of mammals, uh, we see nipples everywhere. <laughs> With a couple of small exceptions, not the least of which is this group here, the cetaceans. Cetaceans are our whales and dolphins, animals which were at one stage in the past terrestrial and have moved back into the oceans. Now, I think this is really the key to understanding what's happened in their evolutionary history. Up here in the terrestrial environment, we're surrounded by air. Air is a low density, low viscosity medium, which means that the forces of gravity acting upon us are quite strong. Terrestrial environments are full of water. It is a dense, viscous medium, which means that gravitational forces are, are much more reduced. Whereas terrestrial animals <laughs> are able to counteract uh, the you know, pressures of gravity um, and stay upright, what I think has happened is at some stage in the past when uh, the cetacean ancestors were terrestrial, they have lost their nipples. And this means that they were unable to counteract the effects of gravity <laughs> and could not stay upright. And to, to counteract uh, their uh, lack of gyroscopic nipples, they then had to migrate back into the oceans where they could stay upright. <laughs> now, on the way here, somebody uh, alerted me to the Free the Nipple movement. Um, and this is a hashtag that, that's there to promote it. I didn't have a, a huge amount of time to look into what this movement was, but from, uh, from a quick read of a couple of blog posts, it was something along the lines of the fact that our sort of publicly acceptable standards of dress uh, require us to cover up our nipples, and this is a real uh, public safety concern. <laughs> because they might not be functioning optimally. Uh, but I don't really think that this hashtag is really getting that, that message out there. So I'm, I'm suggesting an alternative, which is a uh, free the external paired conditionally lactating bidirectional gyroscopic stabilizing organs. <laughs> so you don't fall over. <laughs> It is less than 140 characters. <laughs> and I will leave it there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.